Thanks for the introduction. So my name is Grant Chanebeck, and this is joint work with uh, Sanzit Arnoir and Perrin Dillon, who couldn't make it here, and so the least contributing author is giving the talk, so all the credit to the other authors. Uh, so we're talking about uh, long-term effects of recommendation systems. So we all consume a lot of online content, as do everyone else, and a lot of the content is provided through recommendation systems, and a lot of the work describes how to um, provide good recommendations, where good is what the uh, user wants, and we're interested in a different question, which is, in the long run, how do these recommendation engines affect society? Uh, how do they um, affect <laughs> just the landscape of the content that people are consuming? Okay. All right. So uh, we'll just start off with some definitions. So uh, we're going to look at two main uh, effects. One is homogenization. So here, uh, consumers are consuming similar content, even though they might have different preferences. So the the kind of normal term for this is blockbuster, right? Where people might have different uh, uh, thoughts about what a good movie is, but they all go to see the same movie. Okay. And the second is a filter bubble effect. And the idea here is that people have different preferences, but they're consuming very different content. So the content is not kind of overlapping between the, the different, different folks. Okay. And we want to know how recommendation engines affect these two phenomena. And the answer should uh, guide the design of future recommendation engines. Okay. And in the past, literature has, has looked at these two concepts and has shown that personalized recommendations tend to uh, <coughs> decrease filter bubbles by homogenizing people. Okay. And the goal of uh, this paper and this talk is to ask if we can explain the, the dynamics between homogenization and filter bubbles beyond a simple trade-off. So uh, can these... Uh, vary independently, and, and, and how do different recommendation engines affect them. Okay. So the contributions of the, the paper, which I'll discuss, are threefold. First, we uh, create new definitions for homogenation and filter bubble effect in terms of inter and intra-user diversity, and I'm going to define those terms in a, uh, the next slide. And then we do agent-based model simulations to examine the effect of recommendation systems on these two types of diversity. and use those to kind of explain homogenization and filter bubble effect. And then we design to uh, or look at two new recommendations that uh, try to um, make different things happen. Okay. So, okay. so the first definition is inter-user diversity. So this is, uh, you, you take the kind of mean consumption of each uh, agent and you look at how much this varies. So the idea is that the users here um, are on a real number line and their preferences are on the real number line and the items are on a real number line, okay? And so the people are consuming different items and so there's kind of an average item of each, uh, each person consuming. And here, more or less, we can uh, look at how far apart the different averages are. So you can think of this as a sort of a variance of the means. And then intra-user diversity just looks at one agent at a time and says how different are the items that that agent is consuming. And then we kind of uh, average across the agents. So this is a sort of expectation of the, of the variance. So we can plot intra-user diversity on the x-axis and inter-user diversity on the y-axis and kind of look at how they interact together. So we'll first examine this box in the upper left, which is the we call strong filter bubbles. And the idea is that if you have uh, high inter-user diversity and low intra-user diversity, that the, the overlap of the items that agents are, are consuming is, is not very large. Okay. So again, intuitively, uh, as inter-user diversity increases or inter-user diversity decreases, um, the filter bubble effect is, is increasing. Okay. And we measure this as the, the ratio between inter and intra-user uh, diversity. Okay. And if everything is kind of Gaussian, so, uh, um, here, then uh, this is basically measures the overlap. So there's some reason besides just things go the right way for the formula. And you can see in this diagram that so the strong filter bubble is kind of upper left, and weak filter bubble then is lower right. Okay, so now let's look at uh, homogeneity. And we're going to say homogeneity means the overall consumption of users is narrow, right? So there's a, a vast swath of items that users could consume, but they're 
if it's homogeneous, they're consuming the blockbusters. There's not a lot of niche products being consumed. Okay. And intuitively, homogeneity uh, increases when inter or intra user diversity decrease. Okay. And so we represent homogeneity as the uh, ratio here. So um, inter user diversity, intra user diversity are squared. And you're like, yeah, more or less from 20 degrees, this is kind of uh, measuring the, the variance of the consumption of overall products because okay, it's sort of convolution of the two. Okay. And so here's our, our diagram again, and we see strong homogeneity is on the lower left, and so weak homogeneity is on the upper right. Okay. So now we want to study uh, these effects through agent-based simulation. So users are each going to have a preference P, which is a real number, and items also have a genre G, which is a real number. It's kind of on the same scale as the user preferences. But they also have a quality. Okay? And users would like to choose items that uh, have high quality, but also match their taste. Okay? So that's uh, the, what the user is going to do and the goal of the user. So uh, the user and the item, this is a pretty sketchy uh, <laughs> example of the setup. But the user and the item distributions are going to be Gaussians. But users are going to have imperfect knowledge, so kind of a noisy signal about the item quality and the genre. Okay. And they're going to approximate their utility. Uh, they're going to try to optimize their utility, but they're not going to be able to do it so well. Uh, and so we're going to we're going to simulate what the users are doing using machine learning. So they're doing something reasonable to select items that uh, maximize their utility, but they also have recommendations provided to them, right? So they have their own signals and and perhaps a signal from a represent uh, from a um, recommendation. And in each round. Uh, they're going to see the recommendations and they're going to consume one item and at every round some new items are added so that it's not just completely static. Okay, so that's the setup of the agent-based model. Okay. And uh, we're going to examine initially kind of traditional uh, recommendation systems so based on you tell the user the number of times an item has been purchased or some SVD-based recommendation system okay. and or a hybrid of two and we're going to see what happens mapping these on our Access, access is intra-user diversity and y-axis is inter-user diversity. And we see that compared to the blue dot in the middle, which is no recommendation, that when we provide users with recommendations, the intra-user diversity more or less remains the same. So the, the kind of diversity of content that any one person is consuming is, is the same, but the inter-user diversity decreases, right? So they're kind of moving uh, towards the center. Okay. And so if you think in terms of filter bubbles, this is kind of creating a weaker filter bubble, it's going slightly down and to the uh, right of the, the blue dot, and also is homogenizing, it's going down and to the left as well, because it's just going down. All right. Okay, so the, the next goal is can we design some recommendation systems that do something different? So we have uh, a couple of these. The first one is binned uh, consumption based recommendation. So here, what we're doing is we're, we're telling the user uh, not just how many times an item was consumed. But relative to where it is in the distribution, uh, its neighbors, how many times is it consumed? Kind of more or less than, than expected. So the idea is, if you have 95 million views on YouTube, this is an example of by, I should have said, uh, Sanzid put the slides together. If this is his example, I don't listen to rock music on YouTube. But um, if it's a pop music, maybe that's not so much 95 million. But if it's like heavy metal, that's a lot of views for, uh, for a heavy metal video. So. This allows the user to, con to contextualize uh, the information from the recommendation engine. It tells the user more about quality, right? And if the user has more information about quality, then they rely on that more than the genre yeah. because they um, have more information on that. And so the intra-user diversity actually increases, right? Because they're not indexing so much on how close this thing is to me, but uh, a little bit more on the quality. Okay. And the next. Uh, is skewed top pick. So this is a, a, a non-personalized curated list that recommends kind of cheat and we give the recommendation system the quality, but it, it tries to, it recommends based on the quality, but it tries to push people towards uh, more niche items. Okay. And if you do this, uh, it actually increases the intra user diversity. People are uh, pushed to more niche items and they kind of collapse in the, in the center of the less. So in summary, we looked at the dynamics between homogenization and uh, filter bubbles and saw it's nuanced and uh, understood it through the lens of inter and intra uh, user diversity. 
we saw that past consumption-based recommendation uh, systems largely operate on inter, or, sorry, inter user diversity in our model, not really affecting intra user diversity. And we saw that uh, recommendation engines could be designed to affect both types of diversity. And finally, this is a note, let me say that um, design choices should be made independent of context. So the paper takes no position on whether filter bubbles or homogenization are good or bad. And you can think of scenarios in which they're probably, you think they're good or bad or, or indifferent. And we're not, we're not uh, weighing in on that. Um, <clears throat> for future work, so here we assume that the, the placement of the items on the uh, <clears throat> genres was exogenous. But you can imagine that the content creators are part of the game and are creating content in response to the recommendation engine uh, and, and our, um, <coughs> our session chair has done some work on exactly this. So we'll plug that. And you could also imagine that we have competing platforms, not just, uh, not just one. And so the recommendation engine has to kind of uh, uh, <coughs> take into account uh, that the users are choosing a platform, perhaps based on the recommendation engine. And that's uh, all, so I'll see everyone at the poster session to answer some questions.